us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel is found in Mark chapter 13. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting at the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We are continuing to read excerpts from the book Discipleship by J. Heinrich Arnold, Living for Christ in the Daily Grind. I remind you that the words that I share are the author's and not my own. Um, I will read an excer excerpts from the chapter entitled Family Life today. Jesus said that only children, or those who are like them, will enter the kingdom of God. Unlike adults, children are not divided, dualistic beings. They are one whole. They are vulnerable. They are wholly dependent on father and mother. Christ calls us to become like children, and this means we must drop everything and become completely dependent on God and one another. If we as parents love God with all our heart and soul, our children will have the right reverence for us, and we will also have reverence for our children and for the wonderful mystery of becoming and being a child. Reverence for the spirit that moves between parent and child is the basic element of a true family life. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, set him in front of them, and said, I tell you this, unless you turn around and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. These words of Jesus tell us of what great value the soul of a little child has in the eyes of God. We can be sure that every hair of every child is counted by God and that every child has a guardian angel who always has access to the throne of God. The innocence of a child is an enormous blessing. However, there is an inclination to sin in every child, and therefore we must lead children in the right way so that they do not lose their childlikeness, that is, their purity of heart. It is a terrible crime to lead a child to sin. It is very important for parents and educators to implant in each child a deep love for God, for Jesus, and for other people. Parents and educators should tell children about Jesus, how he was born in a stable, how he lived and worked, how he healed the sick, how he loved children and blessed them, how he died on the cross and rose again, and what significance the angel world had in his life. It's important to have a childlike attitude toward the world and toward the life of Jesus. Children experience spiritual things in a much more real and deep way than we suspect. It is more important to lead children to a burning love for Christ than to teach them, much less force them to say regular prayers that do not come from the heart each morning or evening. Children can learn to love God through songs and stories from the Bible and from hearing about the life of Jesus. The first task of parents and educators is to awaken in children a love for Christ. 
then an inner urge to pray to him will also awaken in them. It is no use to know the Bible inside out or to make children learn it inside out if God does not speak directly to the heart. We need to be very careful not to put religious pressure on children. We want them to have a simple childlike attitude toward God, toward Jesus, and toward the Bible. Just as we must cleanse our own hearts continually, so we must prepare the hearts of our children so that they may become good soil for the word of God. God suffers when a hard heart is like a hard trodden or rocky path, or when it is full of thorns. Preaching, however, does not make good soil. It often hardens the heart. Our church has its own nurseries for our children from uh, from age of six weeks and up, its own kindergartens and schools, but we do not believe that the church community has the main authority for educating children. The parents do. The home is the foundation of education. Those who care for children at school or elsewhere can only complement the spiritual atmosphere of the home. A child's inner security begins in his relationship with his parents. The Ten Commandments do not say in vain, honor father and mother. We have found that when a child does not learn to honor his father and mother, he often finds it hard to fit into society in later life. For a child, the fear of God must begin with fear of father and mother. The idea of fearing God is biblical, but this does not mean that a child should be afraid of his parents or afraid of God. It simply means that he should have deep reverence, deep respect, and deep love for them. It has been said that the first four years of a child's life are the most crucial in his education. If a child has reverence for his parents and for God when he is three or four years old, then the battle is won. But if his self-will is victorious at this age, it will be very difficult to overcome later. As regards children's education, I would say that in general, I am wary of extremes, of the pendulum swinging from one side to the other, from hardness to softness, from depression to exaggerated joy, from a negative approach to a positive approach that no longer sees any real problems. One must find a way that tackles all difficulties in patience, joy, and loving clarity. As parents, we must overcome the illusion that our children are good. We must be careful not to have too rosy a view of them, and we must not be touchy if someone questions their behavior. We must love our children so much that we are ready to fight for their souls. You say that you feel completely helpless in connection with your child's difficult behavior. Please do not be hide, hide behind this excuse. All of us are helpless and dependent on God. You are no different. But a sin, it is a sin to throw up your hands and cry out, we are helpless. As parents, you are called by God to help your child and to love him, but also to fight for him and to be firm or even strict when necessary. The main thing is for you to win your child's heart. I plead with you to fight for your children. There is no reason for despair if one fails again and again. One must simply keep up the fight. It cannot be tolerated that a child goes to the dogs. Be compassionate, be strict, be gentle again. It will not always be easy going, but you are responsible before God for your children. I want to encourage you to have patience with your children. A certain sharpness toward children is healthy, but impatience is not. May God give us patient hearts. There is a certain point at which a child is no longer a child in the true sense of the word. The moment he sins consciously, he ceases to be a child. It is then that the task of his parents and teachers to help him find repentance, the experience of Jesus on the cross, and a conversion that leads to the forgiveness of sins. Through the cross, a lost childhood can be restored. There's no question that children differ in how they learn. Some children learn more through hearing, some through feeling, some through seeing, and so on. We must try to be just toward each child. We do not want to push every child toward an academic career. That would be out of the question. 
The main thing is that a child is surrounded by love. Academic work should and must be done, but woe to us if it is done at the expense of the childlike heart or of the child himself. The stupid arrogance of cheap teachers who think of themselves and others as of their choosing as intellectually gifted to the exclusion of still others is pure sin. We must be ruled by Christ, the head of the body. In him is true childlikeness, compassion, and mercy. In order to hear Jesus speak to us, it is important to listen to our hearts. When we feel love to God and to Jesus, to our father and mother and brothers and sisters, that is the voice of Jesus. It is a privilege to lead young people to Jesus, to show them how marvelous God's world is despite the terrible impurity, corruption, and darkness of our age. For young people, it is especially important that their reverence for God and their respect for father and mother is never ex extinguished, even if they do sin consciously. Parents must seek a relationship of trust with their children from earliest childhood on and not wait until problems arise, say around the age of five or six. If they wait too long, they may be able to gain outward obedience only, and not the inner response and respect necessary to solve problems like lying, indecency, and disobedience. But if a relationship of trust and respect is achieved, it will be impossible for a child to resist his parents. Some young people go through more difficult periods of development than others, and we must be careful not to be too harsh and judgmental toward them. The main thing is that they are led to repentance, conversion, and faith. I do not believe that this can be achieved through hard punishment. As long as there is even a little flame of reverence for God and parents within them, the way to their hearts will remain open. However, where the last spark of reverence has been extinguished in a young person, one can only fight for conversion through prayer. We must remember that conversion can never be brought about by persuasion. I often think of the words of Jesus, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world at the price of his soul? Especially when I see what our youth is taught today in the area of psychology, I'm afraid for their souls. What makes me uneasy is that man's lower instincts are put in the center and viewed as harmless simply because they are natural. It is a terrible thing to teach about the human soul without teaching them about its relationship to God. You have a weak body, but you have a living soul. Thank God for this. There are many people in this world who have a strong body and a dull soul. Actually, all people, even if they are strong and healthy, depend on God and on Jesus. Only sometimes do they, they do not realize it. The wonderful thing is that you do hold firmly to this and Jesus will lead you through everything. You are never too young to give your life to Jesus and you are never too young to feel his closeness. I am thankful that you want to give everything up to God and that you want to be humble. Hold on to this longing through all struggles. Your life will surely bring them for there is no life of discipleship without need and struggle. I wish you the protection of God in all you may go through. May the pierced hands of Jesus hold you firmly as you hold firmly to him. The main thing is not joining a church, but following Christ. If you are clear about this, God will show you the way to do it best. We will support you, even if your way is not the way of community. Thank you for listening. I've been reading excerpts from the book Discipleship, Living for Christ in the Daily Grind by J. Heinrich Arnold, a reminder that the words that I've spoken are the author's and not my own. And I invite you to join with me in the Lord's Prayer as we close. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.